Gadget UK here again. As you can see, this time we're looking at a Neo Geo Power CD X. So this is um, the uh, European version, I think, um, of the power. Well, it just does say AC 110 to 240. That's interesting. Uh, well, anyway, it's a power supply for Neo Geo CD, uh, and you can see we've got uh, handily we've got the um, voltages marked on here. We've got five volts, two amp, ten volts, one amp is what this will provide um, and you've got the three pin connector there if we can see that with um, yeah, ground five volts ten volts so I can measure uh, the voltages and I'm going to do that now with my multimeter it looks a bit dirty this it's got a strange appearance to the underside can you see that sort of it's like liquid or something's leaked I wonder if the, it's going to be the caps that probably leaked inside this um, but we'll measure the voltages both in DC and AC to see if there's a, any ripple coming out of that um, I haven't got a Neo Geo CD to test this with. I could actually add, introduce some load um, if I calculate the resistor size um, based on the voltage. I can work out, you know, I can draw a particular current, so on the 5 volts, I can perhaps draw an amp using some resistors. And initially, I'm just going to measure with the DC multimeter here and just to see if there's any um, signs of a problem. So I've got it switched on here. Let's uh, just measure, I can't remember which one's the ground. I think it's one of the corner points actually. But yeah, it's outputting nothing which is a bit mysterious and then we've got a blown fuse or something I don't know so you can see no one's been in this, these are really dirty um, yeah corrosion or something so no idea what state this is going to be inside, it looks like dirt actually so before I can get inside there actually I'm going to have to just uh, clean it up with a bit of a cotton bud actually because I can't really see what's going on, what kind of um, screws we've got there yeah I think they're just uh, hexagonal ones aren't they you know like uh, sort of like that the outside of that you know the opposite of that um, I might be able to use my N64 um, adapter to get in there I'm not sure yeah this might do the trick no it's too too wide so this is probably not the exact size but it's one of these game bits adapters I think this actually was for the game gear uh, of all things, I could be wrong, um, but yeah, that's making a reasonable fit there. As long as you put enough pressure down, I can feel it's, uh, it's gripping the head, that screw. So, yeah, that seems okay, I think. So, we got the screws out, let's uh, get the top off. So, it's looking uh, pretty clean in there. I'm not seeing any signs of damage or anything immediately. Uh, I'm just to make sure you've got this unplugged. I'm careful not to touch uh, certainly that main cap there. There's going to be a charge held for a period of time once this is uh, being switched off and unplugged. But yeah, I mean, it, it could need recapping, so we'll inspect some of these caps quite closely. I'm going to need to take this top piece of shielding off. This is not the first time I've been inside one of these, actually. I had uh, a look inside uh, Scott's when uh, Scott sent his uh, Neo Geo CD uh, to me. But yeah, I'm guessing if there is going to be a problem with caps, it's, it's primarily going to be these here, these three or four caps here on the output side more likely than not. This heat sink uh, and shielding came off pretty easy actually um, I desoldered the one point down here but then it just came off so like these here the solder were just uh, dried out you know just maybe from heat expansion or something it wasn't making a good fit just came straight off with a one single solder point uh, whether that's got any bearing, I don't think so. It might do, um, but then again, if you look at the trace here um, from this corner, it comes all the way down here, uh, down to that one. So those two are definitely joined together. Um, yeah, that top corner there's just a support by the looks. Things doesn't go to anything. So yeah, it, it wouldn't be that. But so uh, yeah, it was certainly dry joints there on that. Um, but yeah, the caps look fine. Um, I don't see any signs of leakage. Um, there is a conformal coating on the board, if you look, you know, it, it can look like it's wet in places just round the actual components themselves, you know, just where the, the, the points go through to the other side of the board. You know, if you look at that resistor there, see that little mark around it, but it's just a conformal coating. There's uh, there's nothing. And it's usually this. This will cause you glitching out and resets and things. Um, because they just get a bit worn. Sometimes it's worth just, just bending them in slightly a little bit if you can. Or cleaning them up, you know, make sure they're not oxidised, and certainly clean up the, um, the the male side that's actually on the Neo Geo CD itself. Just on reinspection, actually, in this corner here, where I thought you know it only went to the shielding and that was it, didn't go anywhere. There is a cap 
there's a cap position there, I think it is, can you see down here? Um, so, I'm not sure whether that was causing the problem, because it was, it was a dry joint. That would have been making, con you know, connection break and a connection to ground. Um, so, yeah, that might have been what was wrong with it. I don't know, but yeah, this was not this shield in here was not making a connection at these sides here. It like broken, you know, the solder would detach from the uh, heat sink. Good God, I think this has been kept in a shed. Can you see that? I've just wiped this little bit of plastic here. It's absolutely filthy. This. Um, that's why it's got that strange appearance to the underside of it. It's like it's soil or something. I don't know. Maybe it's been kept in a shed. Um, but yeah, that's that's. Uh, oh God. I might just take this part actually and just wash this in the sink, it's, it's that bad, it's, uh, it's like soil or something coming off it. So as part of the standard things I do while I'm here is uh, check the fuse and as you can see it's got the wrong size fuse in it. It's got a 13 amp fuse so yeah I'll get that straight out, that's a fire waiting to happen right there. Um, get a 3 amp fuse into here, uh, just check that the yeah, terminals are nice and tight here, which they are, and uh, the cable strain, you know, the strain relief there is making a good fit as it is, that's fine. So let's just uh, measure the voltages now, I'm not sure again which one's ground, I mean I could just look at the back there, yeah I think the other one's ground actually, that one's ground. Yeah so we've got 5.61 on the 5 volts and 9.4 on the 10 volts, so yeah those are approximately right. It may still need a recap, but it's interesting now we've now got the voltages back. Um, the, that 13 amp fuse was okay. Well, it wasn't okay, it shouldn't have a 13 amp fuse in it. But it was uh, not open circuit, and in fact, <laughs> if that 13 amp fuse had gone open circuit, you'd expect uh, some pretty nasty exploded things within the power supply. Um, and yeah, it would probably start a fire actually. So I don't expect this is going to work without a recap. We've seen the voltages are there. But it's worth just testing it now with the Neo Geo CD. Uh, now, it's been a period of time since I did the first part of the uh, repair to this power supply here. In the meantime, a Neo Geo CD has arrived, and if we switch this on, can you see here? Can you hear the sound? What's happening here is the power supply is cutting out. Now, I'm not ruling out a fault with this system, um, but from what I understand, this system's just got a problem with the CD read, so I've switched that off. I'll connect the uh, multimeter up. So, just measuring the voltages here, the 5 volts at the bottom, the ground is at the top right, so if we uh, connect this to the ground, and I'll be careful not to short the probe to the shield on the left hand side there, you'll see we've got 5.61 on the 5 volts, and 10 volts, yeah, 9.88 volts. So the supply is there, but just watch this, I'll switch it on, and we'll measure again. You can see what's happening straight away here, hang on. That's the 5 volts, can you see? Just going dot, 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 you know, it's not able to measure it. Same on the 10 volts. So either the Neo Geo is shorting the supply out, which I don't think is the case. Like I say, I think this, this was described as having a faulty CD unit. So it looks like we do need to recap it. It was perhaps a bit naive to assume that just the bad connection on one of the uh, points over here was an issue. But it was not powering up at all until it did that. So yeah, that was the first fault with this. Um, but we do now need to, you know, obviously, like I say, remove this uh, shielding. Uh, I'm going to need a little bit more heat here, so I'm using the desolder station and uh, I'm going to crank it up to 450 I think. Just because the heat sink will uh, absorb an awful lot, you know the shield I can here, will absorb a lot of heat. What you may need to do is try and prise it a little bit as you heat it in order to detach it from the edge, you know, otherwise you'll still have a little bit of solder holding it on if you're not careful. We'll get most of the solder off first and then we'll try and snap it off. And I forgot to mention there, these things that are slid like that to hold, uh, you know, the heat sink, the transistors on the inside, just, you know, slide them up with a screwdriver, one on each side. And then you can gra gradually just pull the can away as you heat each contact there and as you can see it's detached okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is just replace these uh, five or six electrolytics actually. It's the problem with this, it's probably going to be one of these small ones, it might not be, it might be one of the larger ones there. I suspect that one's going to be okay. Um, I mean, it, there is a chance that, uh, that it's not a capacitor issue with this. It could be one of these transistors or something, I'm not sure, I doubt it because it's supplying the voltage, you're just not able to provide 
current, you know, onto some currents drawn, that's it, it's cutting out. So it could be something to do with the over currents or over voltage protection, probably over currents, you know, current limiter or something on here that's faulty. Um, so yeah, you never know, we could have uh, a fault in something like that little, just that little uh, hybrid there, I hope not, I hope not, um, I hope it's just caps. Anyway, we'll swap the caps and we'll give it a try and see what difference that makes. So we'll start with the 1500 microfarad, which is uh, this one down in this corner here. Now I haven't got a 1500, I've got a 2200 as the nearest, but that will be fine because all this is doing is uh, smoothing the uh, output. So that cap has been removed, there we go. Uh, looks alright underneath. Yeah, it smells alright, but yeah, it's going to be these caps, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so this 2200 is slightly bigger as you can see but it's the same height so we should be able to fit that on there it shouldn't be uh, out the realms of possibility I just need to make sure it's uh, you know it's further aligned to the left slightly so if we just inspect that yeah you can see you can see here the negative side of this cap here goes towards the dot uh, yeah so that's what we need to do negative towards the dot there and as I say what I can do is just bend it slightly inwards like that so it's in profile with the edge of the board uh, and that should be fine I'm gonna just solder that in place it is important it's not too high though because obviously this uh, shield in here you know could interfere with the top of it but should be okay so I've removed the 1000 I've got a Panasonic FR series here I might just need to strain the legs well I could leave it like that it's gonna sit a bit higher up which might uh, you know it's not ideal because it's gonna be nearer to the heat sink so I'm just gonna straighten those legs up I'm not entirely sure why Panasonic uh, do that on some of the caps actually. They seem to uh, put a little bend in there, which is not what we want. We want it to be almost, you know, as flat as possible, really. Yep, yeah, there we go. That'll do. So I've replaced all of the caps apart from the uh, main cap on there. It looks okay. I don't see any electrolyte. It doesn't smell fishy or anything like that. I suspect it's going to be one of the smaller caps, maybe that one microfarad or the 100 in the centre of the board that's actually caused the faults but if we uh, yeah, just clean up uh, the flux of stuff around where I've soldered those points to try and get it clean, make sure there's no particles there I'll reassemble it, you know, stick the shielding back on and uh, we'll give it a try and see what difference that makes so that's all the caps done, I can now reassemble it uh, bear in mind this one was 1500, it's now 2200 and we had 150 down here that's been upgraded to 220 but these are just on the output side, they're just smoothing so it should be okay, we'll measure the voltages, just make sure it's okay before I connect it up uh, it's just a question of whether it cuts out again or not yeah get this in p position like that solder the points on, then I'll get the uh, clips on for the heat sinks here you know to uh, join that up yeah just add a bit of solder there that's it. And then uh, put some pressure on whilst I, uh, you know, reflow that. Just make sure it's in position. Yeah, that's okay, I think. We'll do the same thing with this one up here. Just get some solder on there. It needs quite a bit. Hold it from underneath. Just to make sure it's uh, as flat as possible. Let's try and get a nice, smooth curved solder point there, there we go. Just this final corner now, and I think this is the corner that was not making a good connection to start with. So again, we'll just make sure you've got plenty of solder there. And the same thing, put some pressure underneath. And just flow that solder. That should do. So I missed taking these off, but I can show you me putting them back on. You can see the curved bit goes on the inside of the package and that little notch there wants to go on the outside and you just slide it like that it should click back into position there you go that's in position and there's one over this side here for this uh, transistor or whatever it is here could be a regulator or uh, one of those double diode things whatever they're called uh, let's just see if we can slide that down there yep yeah, there we go that's in position so I'll carefully put it back in its plastic case now, I'm not going to screw it back together, just put the two halves back together and we'll go and power it up and see what voltage we're getting, then try it on the Neo Geo CD. So bear in mind, I saw no evidence there of any of them having leaked, but I suspect they might have gone uh, high ESR, so you can see we've got 9.4 volts there and 5.61 volts there. 
So the key now is to see whether it works. So I'll plug it into the back of the Neo CD here. The power LED flashes as soon as you first plug one of those power supplies in, it just goes on and then it goes straight off. But the key is will it actually boot the system? Oh yes, I think we can call that one a success. So yeah, bad connection on the heatsink and it just needed a recapping. So I thought we'd have a quick look at the caps. Uh, so this is the 1500, but on the 2000, uh, my battery's low, but yeah, nevertheless, we should be able to get a rough idea. Yeah, so you can see the 1500 is showing approximately correct there, actually, you know, that's going to be within tolerance. But I suspect what's going on here, these have uh, not necessarily leaked, but gone uh, high ESR, yeah, 1000. That's a thousand roughly. So, you know, this is no surprise, and this is one of the reasons why. If you use just a standard capacitance meter like this uh, on your, you know, digital multimeter that just measures capacitance as well, it's not going to be a clear. At least that's a hundred, and again, it's not far off. Yeah, you don't get a clear indication of, uh, you know, there being a fault. That's a Z20. You know, these, these look these look fine actually, and they smell fine. I mentioned before that uh, you know I couldn't smell any fishiness. Uh, there's a reason for that. They do use uh, fish oil. Well, it's a type of fish oil, as far as I understand. There's probably other chemicals and things mixed with it to form the electrolyte there. But uh, that's often why uh, they smell fishy. You can smell like a horrible fish, pungent fishy smell when you solder. That one is a one, I think. Ah, there we go. So yeah, the one. Can you see that? 0.12 that that's reading at 10 percent of what it should be that was the fault actually so had i just swapped that single cap out these are the ones would have been okay and that does explain why we can't smell anything fishy those would be okay but i wouldn't want to leave them in there so yeah I, as i pointed out i think while i was actually uh, removing the caps there just before i did um that i thought it was going to be one of the two smaller ones on the inside just based on the fact that I couldn't smell any electrolyte, it didn't look like anything had leaked. You know, these caps, they look <coughs> they look bone dry. They look bone dry on the undersides as well. So we've got a slightly different failure here than we had when I've looked at some of the uh, Neo Geo AES power supplies. So yeah, that one microfarad cap, that was the culprit. That was why it was, uh, you know, not able to sustain the, uh, the voltage with a bit of current drawn. And just to show you that this meter is capable of reading a one microfarad cap, uh, you know, this is uh, a decent one microfarad cap here. Let's just get that up. Can you see that? 0.97. So, you know, we're almost one microfarad there. So, yeah, that cap's definitely the fault. But bear in mind, as I started saying as we were measuring these, whilst the measure, you know, the microfarad rating's okay, that's not always an indication that you've got a fault. So you could, they could be high ESR. But from my experience, you often see a relationship actually, as the ESR changes, the microfarad ra rating changes as well. You know, if it's, if it's just slightly out of tolerance, it's probably an indication that the e ESR is incorrect as well. Yeah, so only a short video, but uh, I will follow up with the uh, repair of the Neo CD there. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.